This is the Women's International League for Peace and Freedom show, the wake-up call on WCOM, LP, Chapel Hill and Carver, 103.5 on your FM dial, or live streaming at wcomfm.org. You can also watch the show on the People's Channel after a week's delay on Thursday night at 10 p.m., Friday morning at 6 a.m., or Tuesday at noon. The show will also be available on our YouTube channel, Wolf Wake Up Call. I'm Yer Schwinzer here with our host, Lori Hoyt, and Emily Keel on the camera today. Our special guest is Roberta McCauley. Thanks, Iris. Well, I promise all our listeners that we are not going to talk about the uh, Super Tuesday. We're not going to do a political analysis. We are absolutely going to stay away from that tonight. Not that we do it every week, but this is a week that I think we particularly will not do it. Mm. And, and we are so happy to have our guest, Roberta McCauley, who is with Church World Services and their Crop Work pro Walk program. And this is something that goes on every year. It's so important. That's why it's on every year. And I think this is Roberta's at least her second time here for World Services to tell us about it and the myriad issues of hunger in this, one of the wealthiest countries in the world. Mm -hmm. So that is the juxtaposition that makes it particularly uh, morally reprehensible that we have to talk about the issue of hunger in this mm -hmm. country. But we are glad to talk about it and also find out some what we can do. And Roberta, welcome to the Wilf Radio Hour. Thank you. <laughs> the Wake Up Call. Yeah. Thank you. Good to be here. Yeah, it's good to have you here. So we're going to jump right in first. Maybe you could tell our listeners, those who don't know, and there's always some who don't, what is the crop walk? Absolutely. So the Crop, uh, crop Hunger Walk um, is um, an event that's um, hosted by Church World Service, and um, Church World Service hosts hundreds of Crop Hunger Walks all across the country um, every year. Last year we had more than 800 walks across the U.S. Um, these events uh, bring communities around bring communities together around um, the issues of hunger and poverty um, with the goal of ending um, hunger in the communities where the walks happen um, as well as working towards ending world, um, worldwide hunger. Um, you mentioned earlier that it's uh, really unfortunate to, to live in a very wealthy country and have so many um, citizens that go every single day worried about where their next uh, meal is going to come from. And so uh, these Crop Hunger Walk events uh, raise funds to support local communities. So 25% of all funds that are raised from the walk remains in the community where the walk happens. And then the remaining portion of the funds um, go to support children's service, um, disaster response, and um, our development work around the world. So it, it's helping the local community and it's helping the rest of the world also. Absolutely. Bringing together everyone from the local community. Mm -hmm. So we're bringing together the business, uh, businesses, faith communities, schools. Um, it's a family friendly event. Um, we want um, uh, parents and their kids to come out uh, because we think it's important that uh, kids are participating, they're an active participant um, in supporting uh, this, uh, this event and learning about issues of hunger and poverty, um, being made aware that uh, some of their friends who sit in the classroom with them are, um, struggle every single day uh, with issues of food insecurity. And so um, we want this to be um, a fun event, of course, um, but we want it to be a learning event, uh, an opportunity to raise awareness um, in the community about the, you know, just about the fact that there are so many uh, men and women, boys and girls, who um, struggle with food issues of food insecurity every single day. 
So maybe you could, for those who've never seen or participated, just how the nuts and bolts of it, how, how it actually works. Mm -hmm. um, so crop hunger walks are um, organized by local volunteer teams. And um, so we have representatives usually from the local partner agency that is a recipient agency of the walk. Uh, we even have volunteers from there. Um, and then just community people that have a passion. I think different um, churches. I know our church is organizing for people yeah, from our church. To absolutely. Go. So I think some different churches, different yes, organizations different. has their teams. Absolutely, absolutely. And um, so we come together and we plan most of the year. Um, this is quite quite a production. Um, so we plan most of the most of the year. There are. Um, opportunities for recruitment. So we want to recruit new walk teams. Um, yeah. Our goal is to get as many walkers um, involved as possible. Um, so we want to recruit from, once again, the faith community. We want to recruit from the business community. Um, we are um, also recruiting from uh, the university and um, and from local schools. We want, like I said, we want we want everyone involved. We want this to be a real community event. And so, um, so then what? So you, your church decides to do it, or your business mm -hmm, decides to do it. Mm -hmm. Then what happens? So we ask um, um, our uh, churches and businesses to uh, to select or elect a person who will serve as team captain, um, and the team captain is sort of the cheerleader uh, for the the crop hunger walk um, team. Um, in that church or at that business and that person recruits walkers to come out and, and join the walk. Uh, they also uh, get them signed up and registered um, and they uh, are able to create their teams online. There is a, a website where um, folks can go to register their walk team and, um, and as they register their walk team they're also inviting their friends, their family, their family members, their neighbors um, to participate, and participating means that they are contributing, um, supporting the walk, helping to raise funds to support the walk. Um, one of the nice things about setting up the website is that um, folks are able to uh, uh, invite their friends who don't necessarily live in the community to support them. And so a walker might um, ask a, a brother, a sister, a cousin, or an aunt um, to make a donation on their behalf. Um, there are folks who donate in memory of a loved one, um, and there are uh, folks who um, uh, who may know someone who's struggling with, with issues of food insecurity and may make a donation on behalf of that person, but they are able to uh, donate to their walk team online. So um, each team member tries to get some agreements from people that they know mm -hmm. to promise to put X amount of dollars into uh, their tape. They'll, they'll be doing the walk. The, there is an actual walk. There is an actual walk. Yeah, <laughs> where the, all the team members, and I think a lot of them maybe were assigned for their school or business or church or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I know that there's T-shirts because yes. I've seen them, <laughs> that that identify you yes, as so being yes. part of the the crop walk. So that's an identifying T-shirt yes. for each year they have it. It was beautiful. I know last yes. year. Yes, I believe last year um, the theme was I believe the good and be the good. Um, and this year the colors were beautiful. The colors were absolutely stunning. Um, and this year, the theme is love in motion. Love in motion. Oh, that's perfect. In motion. motion. So we're really excited about that. So the actual team members walk X amount of, what, it's usually about one and a half miles or a couple miles? Yeah, so it's a 5K um, um, that we invite um, um, members to participate in. And um, the kilometer is not miles, folks. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a little less. Yes. And um, and so, of course, folks have the option of walking a shorter distance. Yes. Um, they can elect that, and especially for families who have little ones yes. who may not be able to do a 5K, yeah. that's certainly... Um, that's the goal, but you don't have yes, to. Yes, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. And, um, you know, the reason um, behind the, the 5K um, 
is that uh, so many families in the develop in developing countries have to walk so many miles um, every single day to get access to uh, food and access to clean water. Yeah. And so walking in the crop in walking by walking in the crop walk, we're walking in solidarity with our neighbors all around the world who have to walk for miles to get yeah. access to food and clean water. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, helping support the local crop hunger walk translates into helping to support families across this country as well as families all over the world families yeah. that um, our crop hunger walkers may never see may never touch um, but because they participate and they're um, supporting the local walk they are helping to transform the lives of these families um, and i can't say enough about um, just our local partnerships um, with um, uh, crop, our crop hunger walks. We always have local hunger hunger fighting agencies that are partners, and they're recipient of twenty five percent of walk income. And um, in uh, the in this community, the interfaith council, um, the interfaith council for social service is our local partner. And um, uh, I think this past year they reported serving more than 60,000 um, meals to families. And living in this af very affluent, what I believe is an affluent community, um, it's it's unfortunate that we have so it many families. It is an affluent community, yeah. but there there are large numbers of people who are not. Yeah. And we and I think a lot of people in this community would be shocked to know yes. how much poverty is in this community because you know you have in town but there's a lot of rural yeah. areas and even yeah. uh, closer to town yeah. uh, I, I think it gets it's hidden in pockets Absolutely. and I think a lot of people do not realize mm -hmm. that I think 40% of the children in this community mm -hmm. are food insufficient yeah. and I think that it's always a shock yeah. And especially that juxtaposition of such a wealthy community Absolutely. alongside uh, kids having, and there are a table and a porch and programs where one of them they send the kids home, the teachers let them know which one are social mm -hmm. services, but to have to bring a backpack home on Friday mm -hmm. so that they have some food over the weekend. Absolutely. And I don't think a lot of people, you know, this is not something that is blasted in headlines mm -hmm. and but we like everybody else people have a lot on their minds right now it's been politics but there's always mm -hmm. work you know uh, taking care of your family yes. and I don't think a lot of people realize how close to us Absolutely. this is going on and that's why I think the crop walk is mm -hmm. just a wonderful community reminder mm -hmm. and so for a lot of kids who may be walking some of the kids may know what we're talking about, mm -hmm. but some of them are learning through crop walk that Absolutely. some of their classmates have that kind of a struggle, yeah. you know? Yeah, it's so true. And um, you mentioned 40% of the uh, kids out in uh, this community is food insecure. We know that uh, statistics show that children who don't get enough to eat, especially in those very early years, mm -hmm. um, they begin life at a very serious disadvantage. Um, mm -hmm. Children who are hungry, they're more likely to be hospitalized. Um, they face higher health um, mm -hmm. health issues. They're at higher risk for you know, anemia and asthma. Um, so it's so important that we're mm -hmm. responding to the hunger needs of, of families as a whole, but especially uh, for children. And um, the IRC is you know always um, present and, and ready um, through grants like what they receive through the Crop Hunger Walk, yeah. they're able to respond to the hunger needs of families. And when we, you know, families show up at the door, you know, anyone uh, who who has um, who needs to stretch their food budget um, mm -hmm. is able to go to the IFC and get um, groceries, um, mm -hmm. so that they have um, they are able to offer uh, food to their family. And I, you know, as a mother, I just can't imagine. Um, just not being able to provide adequate nutrition for my children. Yeah. And um, that is, um, it's disheartening, um, it's um, 
I imagine that moms who find themselves in that position um, are just feel so horrible. Well, um, I think what happens too is if you have a small amount of money, you'll get the cheapest food you can get, yeah. and that will happen. They want to fill your children's bellies, yes. but a lot of times then you're maybe buying. Uh, a lot of things that are not the best form mm -hmm. and for a mom if she's working two jobs in the family and stressed mm -hmm. you know I've seen on the documentary and I, that made me understand why they go into a McDonald's or a fast food yeah. place because they're exhausted they can get a bunch of food that'll fill the kids up that is not the best for the kids for uh, as a regular diet but it's you're tired you're coming home and it, you know, it's you picking them up from whoever's taking care of them. Mm -hmm. Six o'clock at night, you've been on your feet, and Absolutely. you know it's a it's a way to fill them up and have them feel like they're not right. hungry. But it's not giving them. You talked about their de development, their brains, mm -hmm. their bodies. You know, and yeah. that this is not what's giving them the nutrition that they need. Right, you know? right. And speaking, you know, just of moms who you know, just don't have adequate income. Yeah. Um, you know, we know that the unemployment rate is low, but there are millions of, of citizens who are underemployed. And so even working a full-time yeah. job, if you don't, um, if you're not earning a, a liv livable wage. And how so many aren't. Yes. Then you're still not able to meet the rent. Yeah. Um, and in communities such as this, um, where the uh, fair market rent is oh, yeah. higher uh, than the national average. Um, I believe it's over $1,000 for a three-bedroom apartment. Um, if you're earning you know, $12 an hour, um, even working full-time, that still leaves you short mm -hmm. and unable to meet all of your living expenses. Yeah, I so, think that's part of the poverty here in Apple in place. The affluence means that uh, housing, and that's a problem yeah. across the country that has really escalated yes. in the last 10 years or so, 15 years, mm -hmm. so that the housing, you're not supposed to have to spend more than 30% of your wage on housing is what they have figured out makes where you can have enough money for your food and other right. things, and that's way so many families, the housing is close enough, 50, 60 percent. So that means they don't have anything left for much of anything else. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So it's, um, you know, stagnant wages and the rising cost of, mm -hmm. of housing is um, really threatening um, the livelihood of you know, so many of our, our neighbors. Mm -hmm. always, and I, I see uh, families, we may not see them every day, but I still consider them our neighbors. But they are our neighbors. They are our neighbors, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and as we think about, you know, our children, our kids are the future. And, um, you know, those early years, I can't stress enough how critical those early years are in helping mm -hmm. to prepare them. You know, when they go to school um, and they're hungry, they're not ready to learn. You know, all they can think of is the fact that they need something to eat. Mm -hmm. And so um, when we're able to um, support our families and um, these moms and dads are then able to support their kids, then these kids come to school and they are so ready and excited about learning. Yeah. Um, and and they, they get off to a really great start. Um, so it's... Um, these kinds of issues that we're trying to address through the Crop Hunger Walk. Um, just trying to raise awareness, uh, make sure our uh, community is educated. You know, a lot of times when I think about um, <coughs> our um, uh, men and women who uh, are marginalized, because we don't always see them, we don't always see them there outside of our circle of influence, we often don't think about it. That's right. We really don't think about it, but the reality is, it's all around us. And you know, when we go to Target um, to shop, if we're going to Walmart, when we go to eat out at restaurants, the the waiters and waitresses that serve us out when we go out to eat, um, our school bus driver, you know, that's a really important position. 
But that's a position that doesn't pay a living wage in most cases. Or the still custodian? Yes, or this custodian, absolutely. So you think about, there are some really essential positions um, that our neighbors hold. And these are men and women who, who are working and want to work. Mm -hmm. But sadly, um, they are not earning enough um, to cover the cost of, of housing, of utilities, um, transportation, mm -hmm. child care, health care, mm -hmm. food, just those basic, very basic um, necessities that sometimes we take for granted. Mm -hmm. um, and so the reality is poverty and hunger is, we're not that far removed from it. It's all around us. It's all around us. And so I often... And it's been increasing. Absolutely. Over absolutely. The, over the years, the last yeah. 40 years have been the steady mm -hmm. drip, drip, drip of yeah. things, uh, the inequality increasing. Right, right. Yeah. right. And as we are um, out in the community, and uh, you know, one of the reasons I like to talk about these issues is that um, I really want, would like to see us more sensitized, sensitized to um, the issues of poverty and hunger and more aware of what's around us. Um, because I, I go out to eat at a restaurant and knowing that this person that's serving me um, is really counting on tips at night. Um, and that person that's serving me may be worried about even buying gas for their car to get home at night mm -hmm. or worried that their kids are at home because they're ha they have to work. Um, and so that um, has that um, allows me to be very sensitive to that person mm -hmm. and um, just extra kind mm -hmm. um, and um, uh, really try to be present with them and acknowledge them. and. And um, so if, if for no other reason they feel in that moment that we're together that they're valued. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm hoping that through the education and the information that we're sharing about uh, a crop, the Crop Hunger Walk and you know, especially about issues of hunger and poverty, that we're, we're building communities that are more sensitive um, and more Concerned. Yeah, how we treat each how other. We treat each other. And to treat each person as a person, not a thing. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. it'll just surprise me sometimes uh, to go, you know, and say to Dollar General, to, and how some of the people wait on you will just be so pleasant and so uh, particularly kind and nice, you know. And I think, you know, I know they're making peanuts, and you know. Mm -hmm. And, and where do they bring that up from their yes. heart to, to treat each person with that kind of warmth yes. and, and sweetness, you know? It just, it'll just really surprise me yes. sometimes how people that you know are not making much will, will sometimes be much more pleasant mm -hmm. and kind than, than some who you know right. are making a whole lot, you know? Right. It, right. It, it's just all this... Uh, keeps my faith in human nature going Absolutely. when I see that. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And I always try to reciprocate in kind and yeah. you know, because you know, my kids have been white been weight people and yeah. you know, and they certainly have sensitized me to make sure I leave a twenty percent tip. Mm -hmm. You know <laughs> you don't get away with less of your with my family because they know what it's like, Absolutely. you know, go, either going through school or even after school waiting around to get a better job. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. yeah. Absolutely. You know, I've, I've worked um, in this field with um, families who were struggling you know, for a number of years. And um, I think over the years, um, I've just developed just uh, an incredible sensitivity to the needs of the families and mm -hmm. you know as I've, I've traveled and visited in, in, in different communities and I've had the opportunity to just talk with moms and dads you know moms and dads and grandmoms and grandpas mm -hmm. and um, you know moms who look like me and look like you mm -hmm. who absolutely adore their children mm -hmm. just as much as 
we do, mm -hmm. um, who are so deserving of um, just being an awesome mom, being mm -hmm. considered an awesome mom. You know, I think about uh, a young woman I met a number of years ago, and she was a single mother, had a, a one daughter, and uh, the interesting thing is that um, it turned out the daughter attended the same high school as my son. Oh, okay. And I visited her um, through a, a program I was working with, and she shared with me, uh, she said, Miss Roberta, I have absolutely nothing to eat. We have nothing to eat. And I said, what do you mean you have nothing to eat? She says, we have nothing. Um, and she said, I don't have a job right now, so I can't buy anything. And so um, she said, why don't you come look in my refrigerator? And I looked in the refrigerator, and she had a tray of ice. And I, we, I sat with her for a while. You know, we chatted, and we talked, and I talked with her daughter and um, for a little bit. And when I left her that day, I sat in my car, and I said a prayer because I couldn't imagine being a mother and with having a child that, that was her daughter's age <clears throat> and not having anything to offer my child the next morning before going to school. Well, it was part of your job to kind of put her in touch with the resources Absolutely. that would help her. Absolutely. Yeah. And so it's, it's organizations like the IFC that's yeah. receiving families like this young woman. Yeah. Um, families who who run out, who run short. Mm -hmm. You know, they may be recipients of um, um, food stamps, um, and they may be working. And those have gotten stingier. People don't realize yes. that program has gotten so yes, punitive fun. and so stingy over yes. the years. It's just a disgrace. Yes. And Trump wants to cut it even more with his new budget. Mm -hmm. He wants to cut all the programs that are going to help anybody. Yeah. It's, I'm, not, I'm not making that up. I mean, that's in the new budget. Yes. yes. Including some cuts to Social Security and Medicare. I hope some of these older people who may be a little more conservative when they vote, I hope they look at the budget he's proposing mm -hmm. because it's a shocker. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, um, you know, we have to, um, you know, I often say that we have an opportunity here. Hold, hold that thought, mm -hmm. Roberta, hold that thought. We're talking to Roberta McCauley, and we're going to take a station break right now, catch our breath, make a few announcements, and then we're going to get back to talking about hunger and food. <laughs> this is Will Swig of Call on WCRN LP, Chapel Hill and Harbor, 103.5 FM. You can stream us live at wcomfm.org. Okay, well, somewhere I wrote in this pad <laughs> some information if I can find it. Uh, this is about the about choke, which is how oh, here it is. Uh, choke is uh, stands for what does it stand for? Chapel Hill Organization for Clean Energy. I didn't write that down. Chapel Hill Organization for Clean Energy, and what was its inspiration, folks? is that there is, in this day and age, a coal-fired plant on UNC campus. Just go right around the corner on Cameron Avenue. And there, believe it or not, I think, I think if I remember, it's the only coal-fired plant in a public university in this state. Iris is giving me the, the nod, yes. So, uh, so most of them are moving into some transition uh, uh, fuels or whatever. But UNC, had, who had promised to get rid of this coal-fired plant by 2020, a few years ago said, oh darn, we can't quite do that. And didn't just move it up a few years. They said, oh, it's going to have to be 2050, I think it is now. So, uh, so they went from 2020 to 2050. Now, you explain that kind of thinking as we're worrying about the climate, and this is a university 
that should know, I think it does know, that we're having problems with our climate. But, um, so they still have it. And some, some good people decided that this wasn't right. And they formed CHOKE. And uh, so they're having a fundraiser that will make it easy for you. We're talking about food. This is a way you can go and eat at the Purple Bowl, which is on West Franklin Street in downtown Chapel Hill on March 19, coming up next week, from 6 to 8 p.m. If you go and eat at the Purple Bowl on March 19th from 6 to 8 to help choke, fight the coal plant, 10% of the proceeds will be donated to choke. So you will be getting, uh, hopefully, a nice meal. I haven't eaten at the Purple Bowl yet, but I'm going to try to be there on March 19th and check it out. And, um, and also helping these folks to fight this coal-fired plant. And uh, it's right in the neighborhood. Uh, there's a senior apartments right around the corner on Merritt Mill Road, right downwind from this uh, coal exhaust which I think is not good for anybody, let alone some old folks. So pay attention, everybody. And we have another announcement I'm going to try to get to. And this is going to be about the Supreme Court. Um, it's about uh, my, my right, my decision. And it came from one of our sisters, from Will Miriam Thompson. And um, let me get this pulled up. Well, maybe my, uh, here we go, wait a minute. Okay. Um, we're urging people uh, to call and condemn, condemn Senator Tillis for being among the 200 Republicans that have urged the Supreme Court to overturn Roe versus Wade. Oh boy, every time you, you think people are so bad, they show you that they can be worse. He does not represent us and should be evicted from his office in the next election. And mm -hmm. folks, here's something you can do. I'm gonna give you his DC number. Have a pencil and be ready because with Roberta at the end of our interview, we'll also give you some information you might wanna write down about what you can do about her issue, which is hunger. Okay, Tillis, DC number, keep in mind, he's one of 200 Republicans urging the Supreme Court to overturn Roe versus Wade. His number is 202-225-3121. 202-225-3121. Or you can look in the phone book for his local office. And Tina Baker, who's working on this issue, is going to be on our show next week talking about that whole issue about abortion rights, women's right to for cho choice, and also about the gag rule. Um, so there's going to be a lot in connection with, uh, there's a global gag rule uh, and that's global, where to get some money for like the UN or different things um, for family planning for overseas, there's a gag rule that not only can they not provide that kind of service, but they can't even talk about it. That's what they mean by a gag rule, essentially putting a gag over people's mouth. Today, March 4th, the Supreme Court is hearing a case challenging Louisiana's deceptive abortion clinic shutdown law. If it goes into effect, this law would close every abortion clinic in that state but one. We won't let that happen without a fight. So go to HTTPS, uh, what are those little things? Little slide, little dashes. Slash, slash. Slash, slash. Well, I just lost it. That's all right. Uh, we're going to talk about it next week. 
but let me see, since there's a lot going on before next week, well, I'll come back at the end and try to find it so it got lost. You got the gist, and um, I'm reading it from my phone instead of a piece of paper, so it's not in the best way to read something. Okay, enough of that. I'm going to get back to Roberta McCauley, and this is really very clear. This is a live person sitting right across from me, and she's not on any kind of, of a digital mechanical thing <laughs> that is not my forte. Okay, Roberta, we're back talking now about another serious subject, which is about hunger and the crop walk. Mm -hmm. We've been talking about the issues of hunger, but I want to get back to that, that what's the impetus for us talking about it right now is the annual crop walk, yes. which will be yes. happening all over the country. I think you said 800 different sites. Yeah, we have more than 800 walks more than 800. the country. Um, the Chapel Hill Carborough Walk uh, will be held on Sunday, March 29th. Um, and we'll gather at the uh, Carborough Town Commons. Um, so we are there um, starting at 1 o'clock. So we will begin registering teams at 1. Um, not only um, registering teams, but we'll have tons of fun activities. Um, so we're encouraging families to come out and bring their kids. Uh, we'll have kids um, activities. Uh, it's we'll, a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. We'll have the very joyful atmosphere. Guests, fun music. Uh, we'll have the um, New Orleans Masquerade Band uh, mm. will be there providing Ooh. live music for us. Um, we'll have the UNC cheerleaders there and Ramses will be there um, mm. to take pictures and um, we'll have the Orange County Jammers um, who will be showing up. They've agreed to, to come out as well. So there's lots of um, fun um, activities um, will be happening that day. Um, so we want uh, folks to start gathering at about 1 o'clock and um, uh, be entertained by everything that's happening and then we'll start the walk at 2.30. Um, our goal this year is to raise $50,000. Wow. That's pretty standard for the Chapel Hill Carborough Crop Hunger Walk. Um, and so... About we, how many people is it the usual? That last saw? year we had quite a crowd. Um, we had the weather was gorgeous. And so I would say we had about 250 to 300 people wow. that showed up. I um, know it's a big crowd. It really is. And anytime you have a lot of kids, and there is a lot of kids, and you have music, it's a joyful, fun it's atmosphere. Fun, you can't fun. beat it. Absolutely, absolutely. And you know, it's a great opportunity for kids who are in high school to earn service hours. So oh, uh, we're always boy. looking for volunteers. A double win-win. Win-win. <laughs> so if there are kids out there who um, are needing um, some service hours and to graduate this year, um, they can contact us. And um, if you go to the website, the WALK website. Okay, um, so maybe you give us that right now. We can always do it again at the end. Sure. Um, the website is uh, www.crophungerwalk.org crop mm -hmm, forward slash Chapel Hill NC. So that will take you to the Chapel Hill Carborough Crop Hunger Walk landing page. And from there, you're able to register as a team or register as an individual walker. Um, and then you are um, you could share um, your um, URL with um, your friends and family members and invite them to support the walk. Um, so like a family could be their own team. It was a big absolutely. family. Absolutely. You know, that's not necessarily even parents and kids, but it could be sisters, brothers, whatever. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, it could be just a group of friends. Yeah. Um, a, a walking club. Yeah. Uh, could 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 organize a, a team to be a part of the walk. Two hundred fifty to three hundred. Yes. That is. That was a really nice nice uh, crowd last year. Yeah. And like I said, the weather was Carolina blue. <laughs> <laughs> that helps always. Yes, the skies yeah, nice were Carolina stuff. blue, yeah. and so. Because I know sometimes there's been some light rain, but people yes. show up with umbrellas and with raincoats. Yes. I mean, that does not stop crop walkers. No. No, we, the walk goes on. Yeah. The walk goes on. Yeah. Um, and 
Might so, be a little shorter if the rain gets too yes. hard. But, <laughs> but they're there. Yeah, yes. very, very enthusiastic. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, when uh, uh, folks come and gather, we usually have a short program before the walk starts. And so we have an MC um, who uh, is uh, Aaron Keck. Um, he's our uh, he's been our MC for the walk now for several years. Oh yeah, he's he's on the radio. I he's, think yeah. he's on the radio. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we'll have uh, the mayors uh, for Carborough and Chapel Hill there to share um, a few words with walkers. And Which is I'll, nice. Yeah. yeah, I'll be there. Um, <laughs> okay. To say thanks to all the walkers who've come out to support, um, and um, and just taking pictures and celebrating. This really important effort. Um, so they lay out, if I remember correctly, they lay out the where the walks are supposed to go. Yes. They have like a a map. Right. And so we have volunteers that actually um, put out uh, route markers, and so that as walkers take off, they have directional signs, so they'll know exactly where to go. The interesting thing is the route hasn't really changed much over the years. Mm -hmm. And so for, for our seasoned walkers, they pretty much know the route. And so we, we, they could leave walkers off mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and back uh, pretty easily. But we do have um, route markers um, out um, on the walk route and folks, folks are able to follow that and, um, uh, and then come and get, get back to the, uh, um, the commons. Where we'll have water and bananas and cookies and popcorn, <laughs> and we'll have more music and um, just a, a real festive time. Um, so we want this to be. About how long does it usually take for the walkers? Usually uh, about an hour to hour and a half, Not that um, just long, depending yeah. on how fast or how slow. Yeah. Um, you know, we we say it's a walk. Some folks choose to run, and they're certainly um, allowed to do that. Um, but yeah. So it's about an hour, hour and a half. Uh, it takes folks to walk the route and then get back. So a nice Sunday afternoon stroll, yeah. and you're having fun and helping uh, with hunger mm -hmm. issues for people at the same time, both in your community and also it goes nationwide and also it goes global. Absolutely. Yeah, to, to cut other countries that yeah. that are really which we haven't talked about. I mean, we could just spend a, a little time. We've talked about our local community and the issue of hunger here, but do we want to talk uh, some about some of the countries that sure. World Church Services help? Sure, um, absolutely. I think um, you know it's important for us to uh, to mention that uh, the the. A remaining portion of the funds that are raised um, go to support uh, church will service um, global programs and um, we do disaster response so um, communities that are affected by hurricanes and earthquakes and tsunamis um, and just um, just flooding um, here in the US um, we are Boy. very much present and um, supporting uh, families who are displaced um, when those um, natural disasters occur um, we want to provide the resources uh, they need so they are able to get their lives back on track and return to some sense of normalcy mm -hmm. as quickly as possible. Um, and we also do that in, in other countries as well. So in Indonesia, when they had the earthquake um, mm -hmm. and uh, the subsequent tsunami, we were present mm -hmm. and uh, responding, providing water, um, clean water to families in the villages that were affected. Um, we work in more than 30 countries around the world. Um, 30 countries, wow. Yeah, yeah. For our development pro we have development programs in more than 30 countries around the world. Yeah. And they're everything from um, building wells, um, so providing access um, uh, to clean water um, for... Boy, that's so important. If you've yes. ever carried water, mm -hmm. um, you know, I get my, my water in, in a gallon jug. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, over at Weaver Street. And when I was younger, I didn't notice how heavy it was <laughs> now that I'm older. Mm -hmm. uh, it is heavy, and I was saying, God, these get heavier. And, and uh, one of my kids said, 
you know, because it's so concentrated, the water that one of those gallon jugs weighs, weighs eight pounds. I said, no wonder it feels so heavy. Can you imagine carrying that on top of your head and even more? Yeah. Uh, uh, the, the weight of water is, if, if you're not carrying it, you, you don't take it, you just take it for granted when you turn on your faucet. But boy, that carrying those jugs, and as I've gotten older, I am very aware of how heavy water is, and mm -hmm. I've thought about those women carrying it, yes. and their kids carrying yes. it, mm -hmm. carrying jugs for the family. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And spending a significant portion of their day yeah, walking just miles walking to get miles it. to get access to clean water, walking back with that water, yeah. um, and whatever little water that is, and it could be a five-gallon um, jug of water, they're using that to cook, to clean, to for hygiene needs, um, for everything. And five gallons is forty needs. pounds. Yes. And it's so dense. Yes. That forty pounds is not like picking up a forty pound kid that's stretched out. Right. It's it's a whole different thing. Right. Yeah. Right. So we're um, you know, in many uh, communities uh, we are building wells and yeah, uh, just wonderful. creating access to uh, clean water, building water filtration systems um, so that families have access to clean water. Uh, we're also providing seeds and tools and training for farmers so they're able to grow their own crop um, and not just grow crop to feed their family, but that they have excess um, that they're then able to sell in the market and subsequently yeah. earn an income. Um, and that can be so transforming for yeah. families in the developing world. It's like they think it's, it's gotten to be an old saw, but rather than give a man a fish, teach yes. him how to fish. Absolutely. So Absolutely. help them grow their own crops. Absolutely. Although now with the uh, drought that's in so many countries, it's mm -hmm. even getting harder. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah, but if, whenever you can do that, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. So we. Uh, have come up with some really creative ways to yeah. overcome issues of drought. Um, yeah. and, uh, we work in partnership with uh, uh, organizations in the communities where we have programs. and um, That's the best thing to yes. work with local people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Again, rather than coming in, yes. telling people what to do, right. for, see what they say they <clears throat> need and work with them that Absolutely. way. Yeah. Show that respect. Yes, yes. Honoring their culture, their customs, mm -hmm. um, people that live there, they understand those customs and cult and their culture. And so it's so important um, to us that we are valuing um, the the folks that we're serving and, yeah. and, and treating them with the dignity and respect that they are so deserving of. Yeah. Um, so we we have this grand opportunity to lift their voices yeah. and I don't I don't like to use the term that we're giving them a voice because they already have a voice but I think that amplifying it we're maybe. amplifying their voices yeah. and um, and we're doing that through our efforts with the crop hunger walk yeah so we're saying to our immediate community we're saying to people around this country and we're saying to the world that it's no longer acceptable that any person, any human being, goes a day without something to eat mm -hmm. or without having access to clean water. To clean water. We're saying yeah. that no more, it's, not, it's no longer acceptable that babies are dying of malnutrition um, simply because their moms um, were born in an environment where, uh, through no fault of their own, just didn't have the resources to provide for that child for that child and so we come together through the crop hunger walk to lend a voice and to be one voice that's that speaks to the injustice mm -hmm. of poverty and hunger mm -hmm. saying that this is not no longer acceptable well we're talking to Roberta McCauley from World Church Service Okay. Church World Service, Church World Service. Uh, and particularly they have several programs, but we're talking about the Crop Walk program, which is every year and is going to be coming up in our local community March 29th. And, uh, and we'll give it again, but why don't you give us now again 
where people can learn more about it and also that they could sign up there. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So um, they could, uh, folks can sign up on our website. Um, this community has been awesome about raising funds online. Um, typically more than 50% of Crop Number Walk funds raised in the local community is raised online. Um, so oh, please, really? Yes, absolutely. So please visit the website. And it's oh, w I didn't know that. Okay. <laughs> it's www.cropHungerWalk.org forward slash Chapel Hill NC. You can okay. go on there. Go ahead. Um, the contact uh, person is May McClendon. May serves as the oh, I know um, May. coordinator for the walk. Okay. <laughs> And um, she does so much for the community. She does. She absolutely does. And so May is uh, now serving as our coordinator for the walk. Oh, um, wonderful. So her contact information is on there. So if you have questions, um, you can email May um, and she'll be glad to respond to you. Or um, if you um, have questions for me, um, uh, let us know and I'll be happy to, uh, to respond to your question, uh, your questions as well. But please go on there, register. Um, and spread the word. Tell um, everyone. Um, invite folks to come out. Um, uh, this is so important work. This is such important work. Um, we are uh, changing lives. We're transforming lives. We're saving lives through the Crop Hunger Walk. And so we need all, all, ha all hands on deck. Um, but if you can't make it, what, what Roberta's telling us you can donate this money online and be part of Crop Walk, even if you are not able to make it that day, or yes. maybe you have physical issues that you're not able to do it, um, and you're not part of any uh, organization that, that has a team. You can just do it online, which is what so much. So I didn't notice how much comes up online, 40%? More than 50% More than 50 of, the, of crop walk funds in the Chapel Hill Carborough community is raised online. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, that's interesting. That's fantastic. Yeah, that's how things have changed. <laughs> that's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. So, so, you, so you, you get, this is a generous community, so Absolutely. crop walk does quite well in this community. Absolutely. Our goal this year is $50,000, and I am confident that we are going to get to that goal. $50,000? $50,000. Well, that will help a lot, won't it? Yeah. Absolutely. But it's, it's not just, the money is important, but also it's the education, yes. particularly with young people. Yes. I'm hoping and sure that maybe teachers are talking about yes. that in the schools, mm -hmm. parents are talking about it with your children Absolutely. and you know for kids to know you know you may have enough food but there's some of your classmates may not and there's other kids that, around the world who may not and this is a chance mm -hmm. that even a kid can feel that they're doing yes. something to help yes. yeah Absolutely. to start learning that uh, that they have that power to, to help even when they're young. Absolutely. That's that's an important learning. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And I think that uh, as we uh, begin to get the message to our children when they're younger, yes. they grow up um, with the attitude that I have a responsibility to yes. my neighbors in my community to give back. Yes. And they will continue that legacy that their parents have started um, in giving through uh, the crop walk or just giving directly to the IFC and just being generous with their time and their resources to support families um, who are struggling. Well, we have about two more minutes. We're talking to Roberta McCauley from Church World Services and we're talking about their huge program of crop walk, which is helping our local community, our IFC, which is dear to our hearts and very respected in this community. And the exciting thing, Interfaith Council is building, they've been in this ramshackle building in downtown Carborough, falling apart building. I've, you've, I've been in it, and uh, to go up onto the second floor with some offices where it was a pretty scarily, that it was dangerous, and, you know, with the stairs that looked like they were gonna collapse at any moment. So that a well-deserved new building and then they're gonna to try to have them consolidate 
where they fix the meals there. They do a great lunch and supper, and um, and also uh, where people can pick up their monthly food allotment, which is another lifesaver for families. So. Um, so yes, it's going to help that. So one last time we'll do it's www.crophungerwalk.org forward slash C-H-N-C dot N-C. It's Chapel Hill. Hill, North Carolina. N-C. N-C. So spell out Chapel oh, Hill. Oh, spell out Chapel Hill. Spell out Chapel Hill. Okay. Spell out Chapel Hill, then N-C. So you can go on that website and get more information, and you can also contribute. Mm -hmm. Thank you again to Roberta McCauley. We appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. <laughs>